Good morning. I am Uncle Jimmy in Knoxville, Tennessee at the College Hill Seventh Day Adventist Church. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful that you let us make it to another week. Thankful that you didn't let anything happen to us. We are thankful that we are here this morning to worship you. Thank you for all the things that you have done for us and our family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This story, the piano lesson, took place years ago in Desimone, Iowa. It was a school teacher named Mildred Hundraw. She had taught music for some 30 years, and for to make extra money, she would teach music lesson to musically challenged children. And she enjoyed doing that very, very much and was good at it. So she had, one day she had a little boy, 11 year old, to come in to want to play, learn to play music. His name was Roby, Roby, Roby. He was 11 years old. And she usually didn't like to take boys at that age. She would rather have them to come in younger. But he was 11 years old, and he just, please, Miss Mildred, please take me. And she don't know why she took him, but she did. She took a chance on him. And his mother, she never did. The music teacher, Mildred, I'm just going to call her Mildred, never met his mother. She would always bring him down at the yard and just leave him, or she would wait and come back for him. And uh, he wasn't born with any talent that she could see. He just looked like he never could get things right. But he could play his scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. See, I learned that in the fifth grade when I came out of the country. But anyway, he would do that. And sometimes he would, he practiced that every day. And uh, she would, uh, said that he would have notes. Sometimes she would just cringe and draw up. He just didn't have the coordination. He didn't have it. Well, months went by, and several months went by, and he would still come by, and still come and take his lesson. And when he would leave, his mother, Miss the music teacher would wave at his mother, and the mother would wave at him. And when he would always say, every day he practiced, said, I want my mother to hear me play someday. I want my mother, that would be at the end. He would practice his skill every day, the music lesson. I want my mother to hear me play one day. But looked like he wasn't learning anything. Well, again, months, more months roll along. And she might have saw a little improvement with him. And he uh, stopped showing up. And Miss Wondroff said, Miss Hondroff said, maybe he found something else to do. Maybe he found another field he wanted to go in. And she was sort of glad that he had stopped coming, hoped that he had went on. Because in her sight, he just didn't have it. He stayed out for a while. And then he told her his, why, why he'd show up every now and then and told him, say, you know, my mother's sick. My mother's sick. And he was back out again and he was gone this time for a pretty good while. Well, 
the uh, piano recital came and she sent all the people a letter. I don't think she was intending to send Roby one, but he got it anyway. And he got in touch with Miss, with the teacher and asked and said, look, can I be in the recital? She said, Roby, you hadn't been coming to practice, but my mother been sick, but Roby, and somehow or another, she let him come. Okay, time went on. And it came down time for the recital. And they had it in a big gymnasium. People had the, the well-to-do clothes on and the children was playing. And it showed that they had been practicing. Well, with Roby, she didn't know what to do with him. He wasn't getting his lesson. And she said, had him scheduled last and said, now, if things don't go too well with him, I can just close the curtain on him when I get up to make my speech. I can close the curtain on him. Well, the night came for them to have a recital. Like I said, they had played and played. And it came time for Roby to come up he wasn't dressed in clothes like everybody else. He just had some clothes on. And it said, look like an egg beater has been on his hair. And she said, well, it looked like somebody would have cleaned him up and dressed him up and combed his hair. He came up, the little fella pulled his stool out and got ready to sit down. He told him that he was going to play Mozart. And the teacher said, <laughs> Gonna play Mozart and he hadn't been getting his lesson. Okay, he said he's gonna play Mozart. Yeah, I think it was C one. See, I don't know nothing about music, but anyway, that's what he did. He was considered the least and the worst. He started playing, and the teacher said, her mouth was open, everybody else's mouth was open. Looking at him and listening to him for six minutes, he went up and down and just like a perfect Mozart piece, he played it and played it very well. And everybody was stunned that here's a fellow you had written off to do nothing and he came and he played his Hard out. When it got through, everybody was crying. And so but was glad that he had came and did. They didn't know he had this in him. They wrote him off at first. A nobody, a do-nothing, a failure, no talent, all of this thing. But he persevered. He kept trying. He kept trying. And he kept trying. And when he got through, he had it, and he had it with a crescendo. And everybody came to the feet. The teacher said she was just she couldn't speak. Just couldn't speak. So she put her arms around him and took the microphone and went up. And she talked to him. She said, now, before the crowd, said, how did you do this? He said, you know, I told you my mama was sick. She was sick, but she died this morning. And uh, said, I always wanted her to hear me play. But now, in his mind, he said that she heard him then. Now, you and I know better than that, because when a person dies, it's really the dead. But that was what he told her he wanted his mother to hear him play. And that night, the teacher said that, the music teacher said that, and she became the student that night. And she said she learned from this, sometimes you got to give people a chance, don't write them off, because you don't know what they could do. Now, Roby, 
mother had just passed that day. The people at the human services, the social worker was there. They took Roby off and put him in, uh, what did he call it? Um, they, took, they took care of children. I can't get the word right now. But in other words, they took him, put him in foster care. That's what it was, put him in foster care. Well, years rolled by, years rolled by. Roby went to the military. He served in Desert Storm. In 1995, in Oklahoma City, I think it was, where they blew up that building, Roby was in there playing the piano. He lost his life, a senseless loss, Roby. He'd grown up to be a good citizen, loved to play the piano, and going on with his life. Now, the takeaway, I say, don't write people off. Don't write them off. I know we do that. I have done that. Let me tell you, I used to live in Chattanooga, Chattanooga, Tennessee. There was a lady, I knew the mama and the daddy. They had three or four little children. They was hard-headed, nasty face, snotty nose. Said to myself, them kids will never be anything. They'll never do this, and they'll never do that. You know what? Those kids went to Princeton, Harvard, and Yale. That's, I learned then, don't say what. Treat them nicely, encourage them. Encourage them, and don't talk down to them. Let me give you an example. I heard of a boy, and I've seen it, a little boy, small fella, I don't know how old he was. The ice cream truck came along. He was blowing and he wanted some ice cream. He said, Mama, Mama, you give me a quarter, I'll be good. She said, why don't you do like your daddy? Be good for nothing. So don't talk down to him because what you say sometimes stays in people's mind. It stays there. My cousin told me one time, he said, Jim, you will be in prison by the time you're 21. With God's help, I said, I'm going to fool him. Thus far, I'm fooling, so I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to get out of 70. I hadn't been to jail with God's help. Now, that didn't mean I was perfect with God's help and common sense. Don't talk down to him. Encourage them. And encourage them to persevere. Even though nobody else believes them, but just work hard. Hard work. And give them a chance. Give them a chance because you don't know what people is capable of learning. I've had people to learn way younger more than I thought they could. So what I try to do is try to encourage them to do things. Give it your best. Give it your best. Give it your best. Dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful again that we had a chance to come and tell a story, hopefully, that it will help somebody lift them up and help them to do positive things in life the best they can give for hard work hard, help them to work hard and do the right thing. And keep us safe. We ask you to keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.